Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff. Sorry the uh, light's a little crazy right now. I just had the downward cam set up and um, I was just doing my normal Friday uh, hobby hangout uh, during the midday to get some folks over in Europe a chance to hang out and say hi. As you can see, I'm in full bloom today with my hair all crazy like that. So let's go to the downward cam here and I'll show you what I'm working on. Let me adjust the light. Here we go. So, uh, basically, I'm kind of trying to wrap up my uh, terrain that I have for War Cry. It's on my to-do list. Remember, I made that big, big to-do list of like stuff that I want to knock out before I buy anything else. Uh, with a few caveats, you know, in terms of like if stuff's limited, um, time sensitive, that kind of stuff, I'll let myself buy something. But uh, I haven't really had to do anything like that. So anyway, what I have here is uh, this is just all the wooden pieces. Most of the actual terrain itself is done. I'll show you what that looks like here. And just as a heads up, now that I have people in the chat, um, at some point I may have to duck out and I'll just put a be right back thing up and mute my mic. I'm waiting on a phone call about some car trouble. That is the reason why Ma Tribes is so uh, delayed. But here is what I managed to do for the Warcry train. So it's just a lot of dry brushing for the stone. And then for the wood panels, uh, I did the GW, um, just the wood scheme they have in the app. And then uh, for all the ridges, I did black and then worked up the red to make it look like they're still kind of burning from like if they came down. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. All the buildings are somewhat like this. I used different tones for different sections of it. Um, so like this one is obviously gray. I have one that's, uh, this guy here is blue using Sotec green, just to kind of break it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, so all of them have that kind of burning wood on the uh, on the rim, whatever there's like jagged hunks of wood sticking out. And uh, went through and did some minor rust on all of the, the various gates. So I'm gonna be touching those up. I do wanna put a wash and stuff like that on some of the areas to make them look extra nice. But uh, yeah, uh, the big part today is just getting uh, the wood started on all the planks and stuff like that, all the different walkways. There's so much stinking terrain in the set. It's a good problem to have, I guess. So, I see people are throwing in what they're working on. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, let's see, been watching for months. I was just watching old live paint sessions <laughs> with, the, uh, with the more boys. Yes, I have the more boys, they're all done. And actually outside uh, drying right now are, um, 20 arrow boys, a war guard prophet, and a second, oh my gosh, what's he called? War dock. I almost called him a bone dock. <laughs> Let's see. So yes, still very excited about bone splitters. I'll be honest with you, in terms of, of playing, um, I've been more excited about bone splitters than I have with the iron jaws, just because I think their, their spell lore is a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I need that, I need, but yeah. So you have, let's see, your Bob Ross thumb. Now there's some big shoes to fill. Well, I try to be as cool, calm, and collected as he is. Certainly add as much joy to people as I can. Here we go, big fat dry brush. Brushes here. Someone tell me if they can hear and see me okay. My mic just kind of jumped around on me. But it uh, looks like the audio is going in. Okay, cool. I think we're good. All right. So let's grab Dryad Bark. Here we go. Went out for a second. Okay. Should be back on. Yeah. Perfect. Where's my music? There it is. All right. Uh, you're good. Also, finally trying contrast. Yeah, what do you think about it? I don't think... I'm not a huge fan of models that are 100% uh, done in contrast and nothing else. I think uh, contrast plus at least one highlight layer looks phenomenal. That's my That's my sweet spot. And some people have complained, like, oh, does that really save you more time? It does for me. But I understand it wouldn't for everybody, so. 
I was so excited to see you playing and painting the new guys. The new guys. Oh, the, uh, I don't think I painted any of the, uh, what are they called? Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Had to look down at the book. I, I had to um, basically force myself to put the book down uh, and then go one at a time. I was like, I want to learn about Maw Tribes first. So haven't even really touched the lore in that one yet. Using it for wood, fur, and bones. Yeah, I will say, um, I know there were a few folks who were a little bit uh, cautious about using contrast and just because it's expensive you know it's it's not cheap uh, and they weren't sure if they were gonna like it but one thing I, I i will say is that the the browns in that are the best like i love them i love all the browns and the tans because they make it really easy to paint the parts of the model that i hate which is like straps and junk like that and that's been my my uh endorsement has just like just buy those and everything else you can just experiment when you have a couple extra bucks but those are ones that I, they get the Doug seal of approval. Not all of them, but those I like. Let's see, contrast is also a godsend for terrain. Yeah. Ended up not using it here, but that's okay. I can see why it would be very valuable for terrain. This is mainly because I'm doing the battle reports and everything's going to be zoomed in real tight, so I want to make sure it's all nice and clean looking as best I can. There's going to be, there's always going to be parts that are not quite done right, but that's all right. I made the big boy decision to not pursue Othiark Bone Reapers anymore, but, uh, that's okay. You'll see them because uh, Jack from Rerolling Ones is the one who got mine. My set of them. And he is very excited to start playing them. Let's see. Snakebite leather in particular is perfect for wooden bits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like. I do like the Wildwood one. It does come off a little bit dark, so I tend to thin it down a smidge. Um, Sigor Brown is the only one where I'm like, eh, it's, it's a very intense color in terms of like how much pigment it puts on. Let's see. My favorite model from the Warcry starter is the stairs. The stairs. From the Warcry starter set. What stairs do you mean? Sorry. Oh, you mean these things? I don't know. They were right in front of me. Is this what you mean? With the stair set? That's pretty cool looking. I know. I read one tutorial thing that was like, don't put this front uh, bracket thing on so you can have models walk out of it. And I was like, I'm going to lose that if I don't. So we'll just pull a different card. <laughs> Let's see. Best amount of contrast for me is that when I see a model painted with him, I can't tell unless it's stated beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some great things you can do with them. I find um, the, what is it? Uh, Blood Angels Red, I think is what it's called. I use that one quite a bit because if you do that and you just put the thinnest highlight of uh, Evil Sun Scarlet over it, you would never know the difference. I mean, unless I told you, like, it was, it just looks great. Just like if I had built up a couple layers of Mephiston Red and did a wash and you went all out. Looking great. The only one that I, I wasn't a fan of, and that's just a personal preference, is the Orc skin because I like my like my green skins to be more like a, like a military, like art, um, not orange, a militarum, like olive color. 
was what word I was looking for. <laughs> um, more drab. So, and there's Militarum Green for that, but uh, I haven't tried that one on their skin yet. I think my my current method of just uh, Death World Forest and then Elysian Green as a layer, it's already pretty quick. Especially when you're talking Bone Splitters, where how much time you're really saving? You know what I mean? You're just dunking the whole thing basically in uh, <laughs> in. Um, Death World Forest, anyway. Have fun. Gotta go to work. Uh, poor dude. We'll carry on, my friend. Let's see. Using Dark Oath Flesh for wood, Rhinox Hide for Gorgon to fur. Oh, Rhinox is our Gorgon to fur. I love Gorgon to fur. That's a really nice color, in my opinion. I like that one quite a bit. This is the most boring part of painting this terrain. All the wood planks, I gotta tell you. This is some quality television for you guys. <laughs> we'll sit down and we'll chat. Um, yeah, so uh, in between this project, I've been working a lot on my um, war clans. I'm trying to get used to calling them war clans because I, I, I have to break my brain from that kind of habit of saying like an Iron Jaws army or a Bone Splitters army because there's so much crossplay with Big Wah now that like I, I gotta call them War Clans to kind of keep my burn straight. Like even if I dabble in in painting a few from here and a few from there, like I'm still painting my War Clan models and that feels good to feel like I'm always making progress no matter what I'm painting. Um, but man, I am I'm so anxious to get. Um, bone splitters on the table, like a pure bone splitters army. Because, you know, it's just one of those things, like, you don't see it a lot, you know? There's a few folks, like uh, Mogwai Man, who's uh, often in the chat. Uh, I know he does bone splitters. Um, and I know when they combine the books, like, I, they're just, there were always more iron, or people who owned iron jaws versus people who owned bone splitters. And I remember um, when the iron jaws and bone splitters. Facebook groups were combined. Um, someone asked, uh, hey, is anyone going to uh, now grab a few bone splitter units to put in your iron jaws? And a lot of people were like, no, never, what? Just rejected the idea. They just weren't a fan. You know, they like iron jaws. They didn't want bone splitters. That's fine. And the, the book makes it perfect to play them separately. But I was just like, that's just, that's just silly, man. Run it all together. I love it. Wonder what will happen to the greenskin players, though. I mean, they weren't uh, getting a lot of love before. I just feel like nothing's changed. Technically, they can play Big Wah. They can pay play Big Wah because they still have the ogre keyword, or orc keyword. <laughs> Been spending too much time with Maw Tribes. Uh, so you just grab a piece of bones and realize I ran out of skin tone, so I'm painting flayed ones skinless ogres. Ooh, that's cool. What is it? Necessity breeds innovation or something like that? I don't have any skin colors. Make them skinless. <laughs> it's so metal. Uh, let's see. I think you said you used to play WoW, so I think you'll appreciate making Bone Reapers based off the Lich King's Frozen Undead. Nope, I've never played WoW. Um, I well, I played Warcraft three, but never, never WoW. My big thing with video games is that, and this has been the same way since I was in high school, even when I had time to do whatever I wanted, <laughs> is like I only like games that I can pause and walk away from at a whim. 
like so that's why I don't typically play like team games or anything like that. The closest I get to is when uh, me and uh, Jack from Me Rolling Ones will we have a Total War campaign. But even that, the whole point is that you can walk away from a Total War campaign whenever you want. You just let it roll to the next turn, save it, walk away, and you're good to go. Buddy of mine sold me his Night Haunt and Legions of Nagash army so he could buy Bone Reapers. Oh, dang. That is a sweet deal. They are cool. I think uh, in terms of the way that death armies play, they certainly are the most interesting from a play perspective, I think. With Night Haunt second, Legions of Nagash does nothing for me, but... Uh, those other two, they strike me as being very interesting. Uh, let's knock these ones out real quick. Hey, Doug, long time to see. Hey, Brennan. Uh, let's see. Do you feel that the Bone Reapers release was overshadowed by Slaves to Darkness preview? Um, no, no, because I think they, they just, they hit different notes. Um, like I haven't seen, I've seen a lot of people who were like really excited for Cities of Sigmar. And then when Bone Reapers was, you know, really shown in full force, what, what the range was going to be and like the rules and that kind of stuff, they had to stop and like rethink their lives and their purchasing decisions. <laughs> but I, I haven't seen a ton of people who were super hyped about Bone Reapers and Slaves to Darkness super derailed them. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I, you know, and I, I could be totally wrong. I think it's just, it's just a matter of personal perception based on what social media tells me, <laughs> um, which is very unreliable. But yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like it was uh, overshadowed. Um, simply because, like, you know, we had some sculpts, but we don't have any concrete real info about the slaves to darkness book for the most part um yeah no i mean we got some cool stuff and just to know that like i think the bigger thing was just to know that uh at this point um once slaves to darkness is updated all of the old grand alliance books that came out right after aos launched will now be uh worked away from you know they're they're invalidated because there's newer rules for everything Right, and the big question to me is, is Bellacor gonna be in there? Um, I was actually talking to my uh, local GW store manager, Matt, who's an awesome person. Linwood GW, go there, spend your money, he's a cool guy. Anyway, I was talking to him, and that was his big question, which I hadn't even thought about Bellacor. Um, but he's like, you know, everyone else has a, you know, a, a named demon of some kind, and Bellacor is awesome, so the question is, is he gonna be around? So. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, you know, there's questions like that, but I just didn't feel like, yeah, like I said before, there just weren't a lot of people who were just pulled away from Bone Reapers. Uh, most of the folks that I see chatting about the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, they are they are all in. <laughs> like, you couldn't pry that book out of their hands. So, all right. I don't know. So I don't personally feel like it was overshadowed, but, uh, yeah. Bone Reapers got a lot of hype and people excited in my local community. Yep. Yep, yep. I, I just, I, I was very excited about the idea of elite death. I think that is a very intriguing idea and makes them much more interesting than what we see with Legions of Nagash, which kind of stagnated a little bit in playstyle wise. Um... Still a cool army. There's really cool things. I just think that, like, in terms of the kinds of lists that we generally see with it, it kind of... I don't know. The few people who do innovate with it are really awesome, and I appreciate that. But, uh... The, the fact is, it's just so different, the Bone Reapers, with the points and how the synergies work, and obviously they're not command points, right? Thing is just such a unique mechanic. I don't know. Still don't think they're broken, but I do think they are extremely good. And they're going to be... I think they could be a tough nut to crack. But one one thing that I, I like um, that 
I believe it was Vince on Warhammer Weekly brought up was the idea that they're they have Stormcast problems in a death army where there's not a ton of dudes, not a ton of teleportation. Um you know, they have one great gun, right? The catapult, but uh it's just one gun at the end of the day. You can do some sick stuff with it though. I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited to see on that table. See what kinds of lists people come up with. I'm not super into uh, using name characters, but that guy, Volk Mortian or whatever he is, comes with the starter set or the Feast of Bones set. He's pretty cool looking. Not his war scroll. I mean, like the actual like uh, model itself is what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. Kenji Zen, hello, hello, Serling90. Hey, Hugh. Uh, I can finally dust off my Warmer Fantasy Slaves to Darkness army. Nice. Considering selling off my Fire Slayers that I haven't done anything with. Interesting. I like Fire Slayers. The more, the more I've seen them played, I, I think they're a really cool army. I think the new book brought a lot of life to them. Kenzie, man, I'm in a right mood. <laughs> Super jealous of people getting their 2,000 points all painted. Within months of starting the hobby, I barely have 1,000 points painted for my armies after two years. Well, there's a few things. You bounce around between game systems and also armies within those game systems. That's nothing to get excited about. If it makes you feel any better, uh, Brent from Rerolling Ones doesn't have a painted army. He's He's been... He'll, he'll kind of does like you, what you do. He'll, he'll pick a specific model from a faction and be like, I like this army. Uh, and he does own all the stuff for uh, many, many factions and uh, intends to do them. Just gets sidetracked, and then life happens, and all that kind of stuff. And so, I don't think, uh, as far as long as I've known him, he hasn't had a fully painted army of his own. Uh, they have the communal armies over at Rerolling Ones. My point is, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. He's one of my favorite hobbyists and a champion. The Warhammer hero we don't deserve, but we have. And, uh, yeah. Let's see. Real Long Jack. Dentist Office Music. <laughs> yes, that's, that is, that's the actual playlist name. Just kidding. <laughs> Much like your dentist, I won't accept your insurance, but I won't tell you until after you've paid me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Corey, Doug, thoughts on the lore reveal of the Ossiarch Mortark marching on eight points? Um, that's news to me. I haven't touched that book yet, to be honest with you. Uh, I am... I'd like to have a reason to have death get up in there. Where was that reveal made? Is that in the battle dome? Like I said, like they had four books come out in October, and I was just I'm drowning. <laughs> and so uh, when when the car trouble happened this week, I was like, you know what? I'm just I'm uh, a little overwhelmed. I need to chill out. So the night that I, I posted that, like, hey, things gonna be delayed took care of my car and I was I went and played some video games for the whole night I was just like my brain needs to defrag so anyway I'm also reading one battle time at a time so I don't get overwhelmed so it's been all Maw tribes all the time because that's where I wanted to start where my community article mentioned it. okay I'll check it out uh the lore reveals and know your mortar okay I did see that one I didn't have a chance to read it nice 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 uh, Hans Musterman. Hey Doug, any advice for that guy in your family or friends group? I think you mean when you say that guy like someone who's acting like a turd, <laughs> uh, to put it, put it nicely. 
Um, you know, if they ask you to play a game, you don't have to say yes. And that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, always be, you know, kindly express what the problem is. Cause it depends. Cause different people have different, different definitions of that guy. It could be, you know, um, could be everything from hygiene to mannerisms while you play, being a sore winner, um, how competitive they are versus what the rest of the group likes. There's a lot of reasons, you know. Um, that, like I said, that definition is very fluid. But um, express to them how you like to enjoy the game. And you don't, after that, once, you, once you've been an adult about it and been like, this is why I don't think that we will have a good time together, both of us. You're not obligated to do anything with them. You know. Uh, let's see here. I'm planning on making another Chaos character, this time DM Prince character. Cool. Go for it. Let's see. Making characters is fun. Um, on a lighter note, the swords I'm painting for the Acropolis Doctors look like chocolate. <laughs> oh my gosh, these base coach are taking a long time. I know once it's done, it'll crank out real fast because then it's just dry brushing to build up color off of the dryad bark, but. Worth it. I'm trying, so um, basically, uh, I'm, I'm excited to get this all painted because I want to start doing the Warcry battle reports again. And, um, Specifically, what I want to do is a campaign. So if you don't know, um, the way that campaigns work in Warcry is you don't need to have a opponent. And so uh, I can basically film them at my leisure, make some narrative storytelling stuff. Um, and just have a grand old time. So the Warband that I want, at least in theory, I think, to do the campaign with is my Corvus Cabal. I really, really like them. Um, I can't imagine why that would change, but anyway, Corvus Cabal, a lot of their abilities are, are based on, I'll say verticality. I'm not sure if that's a word. I think it is. But it is, they, all, a lot of them involve, you know, um, you get this effect, but also you get this super cool effect in addition if you have descended, you know, terrain more than three inches or something like that. It basically, if you pounced on somebody is what they're trying to recreate. And so I didn't think about that when I made painting the graveyard set my priority when I got the, the box, uh, which is a great set for like playing some demos and that kind of stuff. But for my favorite war band being the, aesthetically the, the Corpus Cabal, you gotta have some some multi-level stuff otherwise they're just they can't get full gas in the engine that's one of those things like when with these kinds of games you know it's only fun if everyone gets to do their cool thing right if the iron golem player gets to do the wrecking ball thing with their ogre breacher and that kind of stuff you know uh, you can choose not to but i think it's more most fun when both armies get a chance to do whatever makes them unique and so not being able, based on my collection, to do the cool stuff for the Corvus Cabal was kind of a bummer. But, we're gonna remedy that. Just got a roll in a show I auditioned. Awesome, Corey, good for you, dude. What are you playing as? 
Didn't know you were a fellow thespian. By that I mean I was in high school playing. I got a scholarship for it. <laughs> Bartender, nice. Okay. Oop. Been theater for a while. Sweet. It is fun. I had a great time when I did it. One of the things I always found funny, and I didn't realize how strange it was until I left Texas, but so Texas has competitive theater for their high schools. Uh, and so I did that, which technically, technically as a theater kid made me an athlete. And so I got a, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the scholarship. I got some kind of like scholarship thing that I took with me the rest of my time in college. I was like, yes, UIL theater, yep. Yep, yep. Did I do theater in college? No, I went to uh, a Bible college that didn't believe in fun or imagination, so uh, no theater. against the Bible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You find me that verse where Jesus had a puppet show. Then we'll allow a theater class in here. Yeah, it's fine. It wasn't like hyper conservative or anything like that. Actually, my wife and I were just talking about that this morning, how crazy it was we met. There. Let's see. So you should post up all my Eldar HQ over in the finished building over in the Discord. Already did already did post my Oh Wraith Seer, yeah, yeah. Nice. The Moth, I love the name. Uh first time, managed to jump in. Uh love love your content. Oh, thank you so much. Just working on some Death Guard. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I had a moment where I was trying to decide between holding on to my Death Guard or my Tau. And I'm, I'm still kind of torn about it, to be honest with you. I haven't sold anything off yet. It just, uh, you know, the Death Guard are fine. I, uh, in terms of like painting, there I don't want to. I already have a Magikin army to paint, so it just seems like a lot of Nurgle stuff going on. But uh, I don't know. Well, Doug, do you enjoy 40k? I honestly don't play it very much. Um, yeah, that's the thing. I don't. I don't play it very much. Uh, when I go to um, Monroe, which is a town nearby where local gaming group is, and where a good friend of the show Ben is, uh, honestly, like I've seen lately that they've been trying to really push Warcry, and I'm I'm very excited about that. There's a few folks there. So, um, honestly, once I get this done, I was hoping to go last night and play, but uh, unfortunately with the car stuff, I was far, far in downtown Seattle. Um, getting my Mini Cooper looked at, so wasn't able to make it, but yeah, I do want to play some, some Warcry for sure. Let's see. How long till Doug suddenly starts putting Bible verses? Nah, it's never gonna happen. <laughs> Could be 
<laughs> so I had a um I had a comment. So ignoring uh uh Jack for a minute <laughs> as I am wont to do. So so I had uh, my Seraphon lore video out for, for forever, okay? Like one of my oldest ones that I had before I did like the actual lore week for them. And I got this very strange comment. And um it was just like somebody rambling about well um Seraphon's an interesting name because it's actually based on the title of Seraphim, which is, you know, a choir of angel and all this kind of stuff. And he kind of, it was an extremely long co comment uh, that went into, like, biblical philosophy based off of uh, Seraphon and, like, the army of lizard people from dreams. And uh, it was so weird. And so, but then I looked at, like, who posted the comment. And the user's name was MLP Ministries. I was like, that is so strange. Um, I've never heard of a ministry that just like stalks Age of Sigmar groups. You know what I mean? Talking about Bible verses. I've never heard of that. So I clicked onto his page. And lo and behold, to my shock, uh, MLP stands for My Little Pony. And there is a person on the internet because... All people exist on the internet, every type of human, where he looks at media, specifically My Little Pony, and makes sermons for evangelical Christians based off that content. And I was like, my brain melted a little bit. Yep, Michael Hammond figured it out. <laughs> he figured it out first. I was just like, um, that's strange. Good to know you exist. <laughs> Everyone, be into whatever you're into. If, if we got some bronies in the chat, that's totally cool. I'm not putting you down. It was more It was more that I was taken aback by how, like, out of nowhere it was. Like, I don't know what the crossover between Age of Sigmar and My Little Pony is. <laughs> and how this guy found me. And, and why I got a dissertation on the Seraphim on, on my chat. But I was just like, I thought that was the funniest thing. I was like, I don't know how I found this guy through the magic of YouTube. thought that was funny I remember a guy that had a space wolves army that had thunder wolves all uh, resembling the different uh, pony characters Oof. My little pony plus AOS equals Pegasus Knights. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. My little pony crosses over everything. <laughs> the brony. Merging their fandom with other things they like. That's why there's a full Space Marine Ponies army. Interesting. Yes, um, YouTube lately has been in full gear trying to get me addicted to different types of content. Because uh, I don't actually watch a whole lot of AOS stuff on YouTube. And their algorithms are constantly being like, what is Doug like? Like, I watch random stuff. I'm like, here's a few AOS things, here's a bunch of true crime, um, you know, a few documentaries, whatever. And so it started showing me my new favorite thing, which is a guy who restores Hot Wheel cars. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but yeah, he just like takes old Hot Wheel cars, gets a sandblaster out, strips the paint, repaints them, gives them a nice finish, and like treats them like they're actual automobiles and fixes them up. I was just like, what? I love it. I love all the different humans that exist. And I was having a conversation with a coworker about it where we're just like, isn't it just fascinating that like if there's something that you find a passing interest in, right, there's somebody on this planet that that is their whole world. And it's so interesting. Corey, it sounds relaxing to watch. It really is. It is actually super chill. And that's probably why I like it. <laughs> that's probably why YouTube suggested it to me. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have um, 
one of my subscribers is a guy who makes um i don't know what the actual term for them is but the skateboards that you do with your fingers uh, i don't know if they're actually like if there's like a more technical name for them but uh yeah he, he does like all of the like the super polished mega chrome finished trucks and that kind of thing and wheels for it a bunch of custom designed boards or some i don't know yeah i just like that kind of stuff tech decks is that what they're called i don't know i'm not cool enough to know <laughs> couldn't couldn't even confirm Let's see. Doug got me watched on watching serial killer documentaries. Yeah, dude. It's pretty cool. You'll never sleep with the lights on, but it's real cool. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Hannah says, I actually watched a YouTube series of two Indian guys making mud. Yeah, the the, um, the house is underground, like for spa things. I have seen that. Yes. That's also, yeah, that's one where you just kind of like, I kind of give it the same facial expression that like when I'm in the shower, just like my brain's just melting. Where you're just like, ow, oh, man. You, you just like stare and you can't really comprehend how somebody thought of that. <laughs> Make a little mud hut, and all of a sudden they've got like a full oven in there, and you're like, I can't make a hot pocket, and these guys just built an oven in the middle of like an Indian desert. Let's see. But yeah, yeah, the internet, uh, Obsessions are some of the most fun things ever. Let's see. You guys watch Mine Hunters yet? Uh, it's been suggested to me, but I haven't uh, actually watched it. But I want to. It's on my list. <laughs> After five videos, I'm pretty sure they built the camera. Uh, that's awesome. Exactly. We harvested quartz to make the lens of this camera. Yep. 100%. Uh, let's so funny. Let's see. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Kubai. Song name. This song right now. Let's see. It's one of those freebie YouTube ones. This is You Can Do It by, I'm just going to spell the band name, A-R-V-N-D. Best I can get you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Ever get when you're painting, you randomly contract rickets? <laughs> Haven't happened to me yet. I have had the, the sudden sharp pain in your back because you don't realize how poorly you've been sitting. It's like, oh yeah, my body just reminded me. I do have a spine. I should take better care of it. I think probably the next step for the channel is going to be upgrading my uh, my seating to be able to uh, get one of those, you know, super cool gamer chairs so I can look like a professional and not have walk around like I have like scoliosis or something. <laughs> The Q shape in Doug's spine is representative of the fact that he's always ready for questions about Age of Sigmar lore. Uh, let's see. Hey Doug, do you think you will do any book clubs in the future? Uh, I want to. I am drowning in Battle Tome City right now because they released four this month. Um, and yeah, honestly, with novels and that kind of stuff, it just takes so much more time. I'm... Uh, 
honestly, if I'm being like super transparent, I'm not a strong reader. Um, it was not something that was encouraged in my household as a child. And so, uh, it, it just takes me time. So I'm getting better. I have gotten better since I started the channel, but, uh, yeah, novels just take a bit longer. Um, versus say like the nice condensed lore of the battle tomes. And then I can lean into my actual talent, which is presenting information rather than memorizing it or consuming it. So yeah, but there will be, yes, there will be. We do need to do a, uh, Oh, what's it called? The war cry book. Can't think of what it's called. Where do you get some of your music for lore videos? I feel like it'd be really good painting music. I get all my music from um, a, a website called Incompetech. Uh, there's an artist named Kevin McLeod, who as long as you give him credit, which I try to do in all my videos at the bottom, um, these videos are a little bit different because I just have a YouTube playlist and they don't care, but because uh, it's all their music. But um, yeah, you can look at the bottom and, and there's a link, there should be a link or a source for all of his stuff. And uh, yeah, the thing is, he doesn't have a way to put it into playlists. So you would have to like pick a song and then pick another song. And you know what I mean? And that would be kind of tiresome for for painting. Or you could just download him and just listen to it for yourself. Make your own playlist. Okay. Okay, my goodness. Uh, what's next? I think I just got these little guys. Question, are we playing AOS tonight? Uh, answer, I'm still waiting to hear back about my car. I have my phone right next to me, so hopefully they'll call. I was hoping they would already call by now, to be honest with you. But uh, right now I have a loaner, and so the minute they have my car done, I have to run over to Seattle to drop it off, swap it out. So... I don't know, but I know that I am free tonight. So if that happens, or they confirm that they need it for another day, um, I'm down. So I'm su so I guess the soft answer is yes. I just don't know what time. Uh, let's see. It says I'm totally addicted to listening to audiobooks while painting. I need to get into that more. The thing is, is I so I, I downloaded um, Play Garden as an audiobook just just to listen to it, honestly. Um, and I like it. I just never think to turn it on. Like I just, I listen to an inordinate amount of podcasts. For some reason, I keep forgetting that I have this audiobook like ready to go. Michael, I'm down, but I'm also having car problems. Yeah, oh gosh. Oh dude, hope you're okay. Got your car totaled. AT plus stuff. You know what you should listen to as an audiobook? I'm gonna say The Black King. That would be my first guess. That's my next book I'm gonna listen to as an audiobook. Why? Was there something else that mattered? I don't think anything else matters. Uh, let's see. If you start doing audiobooks, you gotta get Realm Slayer. It's on my to do list, I promise. I promise, I promise, I promise. It was, uh, well, it was going to be the plan that I listened to, or that I finish, I finish the Warcry one, and then do the Go Trek stuff, but that was before we knew any of the the overwhelming amount of stuff that was coming out very, very soon with all the uh, battle tomes. So my, I, I honestly, like, can I just say, I never expected them to drop so many books in such a short amount of time. Like, I thought, like, the Kaiju Double event was a, was a pretty rare thing when uh, 
it happened for slaves to uh, not slaves, um, Skaven and Flesh Eater courts. But to have two of those same things in one month, my goodness. So, my only plans for the future right now are just get through these battle tomes so I don't have complaint comments in every video about why haven't you talked about blank? <laughs> I thought this was a lore channel. I've done like six videos for Cities of Sigmar and they still have those players being like, so I guess you're done with Cities of Sigmar now. It's like, Duh. <laughs> Stop beating him, he's already dead. Yeah, let's see. Simpsons, yes. They, my goodness, I loved it. My favorite episode was always the one with the streetcar named Desire. When the town did a little play. Oh, so good. Huge media reference fan. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Started the Song of Ice and Fire series. Each book is like 45 hours long. Oh, I can't handle that. Old Doug would have cranked out all the lore videos in a day. Well, you know, my powers have weakened. By that I mean it's my busy season at work. <laughs> Plus, I'm on all manner of medication that's making me have trouble focusing, so we'll see what the next step is with that one. so boring I apologize this is this is really like just watching someone paint nothing but dryad bark for what are we at now an hour <laughs> that's what I should name I should name the video that just two uh, kind of like they have the uh, like the six hours of a fireplace or something like that for the holidays just two four hours of Doug painting dryad bark will be the name of the stream once it's done <laughs> have some of my Ritalin. Oh, yes. You offered me that when we were at Nova, and I was like, no, I'm not. you're literally the person that the D.A.R.E. program warned me about. <laughs> my cool friend offering me drugs. <laughs> Deep cut for anyone my age, D.A.R.E. program. <laughs> made me think I was going to be offered drugs a lot more than I was. I will say that. Things that I thought were far more common as a child than they ended up being for my life. Lava, quicksand, and drugs. <laughs> we did their program. It's still a thing. Oh, man. I thought that was debunked. Because it, it ended up... I don't know. There's, there's some evidence that it ended up backfiring and enabling a bunch of kids to get drugs. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> That's the most important world uh, word in, in the English language. Allegedly. My biggest thing is so my my mom and I we moved every year, and so 
I never got in, invited to uh, to take drugs when I was a kid. My mom was like, "Are so you know?" She had to talk with me. I was like, "You know, so are kids you know offering this to you? Do you see kids like smoking and drinking and that kind of stuff?" And I was like, "No, nobody likes nobody trusts the new kid." <laughs> I was always the new kid, <laughs> so I was like, "I'm fine. I'm as safe as it can get." <laughs> Nobody knows if you're cool or if you're going to snitch or not. So nobody can trust you with their secret. Or Master Sotek. Hey, hey. What up? Come paint Dryad Bark with me. For over an hour. <laughs> Oh, poor uncorrupted duck. I didn't say uncorrupted. My drug of choice was domestic violence at home. But, you know. Who needs alcohol for that? Womp womp. I just found my D.A.R.E. certificate <laughs> from when I was in 6th grade cleaning up. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Let's see. Well, slow much that that guy. I didn't get to see on the stream the other day. Yeah, yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. Back from Europe, kicking tail, painting night haunt. I assume. Uh, let's see. Orc boys are dugs are drugs. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, last piece that I have to paint with dryad bark. My goodness. And then we gotta go back through and wash everything with Agrax Earthshade. That's okay, washing takes it in no time. But man, this is gonna be a baller set of terrain. Gearing up for my Path to Glory game on Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, nice. Taking a monstrous horde of Beasts of Chaos Warband. Nice. Plastic glue is enough for me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Escaping our masters of the back alley. Absolutely shady stuff. I, I find that I am always in the AOS lore. I'm always drawn to the shady like sub subgroups of things like uh, you know Mornar in Carriage and Overlords. They're the shady ones, and so is uh, I think Amblegard in Cities of Sigma. I'm like. Yeah, I want the street riffraff guys. <laughs> I identify with them. <laughs> I love it. Nobody likes this sub-faction, but they're important for XYZ reason. You're like, yeah, not so crappy now, are we? Says every Anvil Guard guy. <laughs> Uh, what would people say are their favorite armies in AOS? Right now, um, definitely the War Clans book. I've only played the Iron Jaws half of it, or third of it, I should say. But um, I really, really do like them quite a bit. I'm having an absolute blast. And while all this mess is drying, let's go back and paint this guy a little bit. He actually needs a wash of Null Oil because even though I used the same colors as the last time I painted on this guy, um, I primed. Uh, he was primed white when I got him. 
And so he came out being a little bit brighter than everybody else. So I wasn't anticipating that. So it's all good. We'll just throw a quick non-oil wash on him. Just a light little one. Just to darken him a bit. I actually got this one, this war chanter from uh, Jack in the chat. And uh, he did a great job on the skin. So I wanted to keep that the way it was. He just followed the... The orc skin tutorial, I think, in the app, the non contrast one. So I was trying to preserve that, but make the armor blue to match all my guys. So because I did Zenith all highlighting was my point, and so that's why everything was a little bit too bright. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, sorry, some questions here. I'm pulling in here. Doug, you're about as street as sesame. <laughs> you know, you don't know me. <laughs> you don't know my life. <laughs> I just choose joy. But much like many people in this chat, I have seen my fair share. Let's see. New Slaves to Darkness has me pumped. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris. So, Doug, any type of army you wish can be brought into Age of Sigmar. Personally, I like a sub-faction, some type of human knights. For me, I would love... I want it to be a destruction army. Because they're definitely like one of the smaller, I think they are the smallest, aren't they? In terms of the number of armies, because they kept combining stuff. Um, I don't know what I want, though. There was a, there's a couple mentions in the lore of like goblin sky pirates, kind of like, think KO, but gobos. That would be sweet. Those would be some sweet models, just like cobble together ships that don't really make sense. Shouldn't, shouldn't work, but do. Uh, I think that would be really cool. Perfect, so he needs time to dry. Um, Corey, anyone else get sad about the Slave Sergeant's reveal? The new Chaos Lord on Tail is a dinosaur. Oh, from him, not the Seraphon. Yeah, I get that. In the UK, STD means sexually transmitted disease. Yep, does here too. It's unfortunate naming conventions. It's, it's almost, I'm going to say almost as bad as when Privateer Press released the Convergence of Cirrus Army, which of course the acronym is COC, cock, and it was just, the jokes were just, they were too much. Um, let's talk, Doug, I think that the recent showing of Halahart taking first place shows that Cities of Sigmar is not the Rubik's Cube people say it is. Um, yeah, I, my only combat to that is that it just came out and then it, I don't know. I think people do need time to react like to adjust their list to compensate for new things. And we've had so many new things come out. Honestly, I, I just, I do think it will take some more list development. I don't know if the, the first uh, major event that it takes is a good, uh, good showing for it. Cause that's the thing where like, I think we're kind of in that same space that uh, 40K was its first year. So if you remember like when 40K relaunched, right? Becoming more Age of Sigmar like, um, they just, sorry if you guys can hear that banging, they're doing work downstairs to a different apartment. Um, they were cranking out battle tomes so fast that the question I was listening to preferred enemies, a great 40K podcast for new folks. And they were like, we need to step back and like evaluate when we say like, the meta is changing. What does that mean? Because when they release books so fast, nobody has time to really, really learn an army, but also more importantly, adjust to what is they're going to be facing, 
right? So it's like this weird thing where things are so in flux. Can we really say that something is, say, broken? Okay, well, we have data for quite a while that Slanesh is out of balance, right? Because that, that's a long-term thing. It's been around for a while. But with stuff like to to say like, oh, Sage of Sigmar, it's everything we thought it was in terms of like brokenness with this one thing. I, I don't know. I'm not ready to make that claim yet. But it is cool that they function cohesively as an army. I mean, that's legit. Uh, they right out of the gate were able to show up somewhere and be like, Hey, we're going to have a good game. We're going to do well at this event. Nice. Uh, let's see. Let me grab my buildings here. We're going to knock out some details on those while we're waiting. This stuff, I thin my paints out quite a bit. So this stuff all has to dry for a bit. Which is always the worst part of painting big things like this in batches with the same color. So now, instead of watching Doug paint Dryad Bark for an hour, we're going to watch Dryad Bark dry for an hour. So You guys know me, I like to mix it up and shake it up. Let's see what we got. All alone in the box tower. Okay, here we go. Tell you what, we're gonna knock out. Actually, this one's all stone. There's no metal grate, so I'm gonna call this one done. Uh, this guy, we can do some work on. I'm just throwing my pieces with the gates over here, so we can uh, work on those as. They come up to them. There we go. I got some fancy Nuln Oil gloss so I can paint these metals and not dull them down at all. Really wish they made new skulls for the Eddies and Frost Savers. Me too, dude. Although there's some people who think that uh, well, we will get those sculpts in the form of... Um, an underworld warband so that might be a thing don't quote me on that one but there that is the rumor uh kenzie question what's a good highlight for rakarth flesh going for a bone look i do not know Corey says Flay One Flesh. Yeah, that's a great one. I think Flay One Flesh is one of the suggested things. Uh, I don't. I used to use Rathcarth Flesh a lot, but I, I struggled to highlight it quite a bit, so I actually moved away from that. Now I just do contrast on the skin and then build it up with like Cadia Flesh Tone or something. Letting it get like thick washes. Get in there, make the creases very well defined. I like deep shadows. Pallid Witch Flesh is my go to off white. That's it, you know, a lot of the tutorials have Pallid Witch Flesh as a highlight for uh, Rackarth Flesh, but I have bought multiple bottles of Pallid Witch Flesh, and every single time. It's horribly chalky, so I, I don't I, Maybe I've just had terrible luck. I know like some folks have had bad luck with uh, the yellow. I've learned Sunset, and I haven't, but I understand that problems do exist. So I'm not sure if that's the same thing. Just someone who's cursed to never get a good bottle of it. Oh, 
All my pallid witch flesh has been crap. Oh, okay. Right on. Glad it's not just me. Like the universe tells you, you know what? You don't get to paint with this color. It's like, but... I'm like Pocahontas, man. I gotta paint with all the colors of the wind, yo. Pallid witch flesh. Gotta have it. Uh, let's see, more of a white scars, man. For me, my go-to if I'm painting something light like that, it's it's just Celester Gray is always my base now. It's my favorite of the lighter color paints. When I was painting the Stormcast, I went through tons of that stuff. Let's see. Hope that they make an AOS Total War game. That'd be cool. Could take a while to get some of the mechanics out because you know if they do that, I want them to do some like real cool stuff. Like I want Stormcasts when they die, they arc back to the sky, or you know when they come into the battlefield, they can teleport in. I want you know I mean just give us the full flavor of stuff. Used to use Celester Gray for stone and stuff. Yeah, I did uh, one of these stone buildings. I just did. I just dry brushed Celester Gray right onto it. Turned out pretty well. Like over black. Uh, Doug, question: What is your go-to? Got to have always useful, always solid paint of choice. Mine is Bugman's Glow. Ooh. Hmm. I think. Hmm. Let me think about it. That's a good question. Celester Gray, actually, I was just bragging about it, but that might actually be it. Um, the next thing I really, really love is, is Death World Forest. I do all my orc skin base with it. It's just this nice looking drab color, uh, which I kind of like those muted greens. And it's a fantastic base for any of those. Those are probably my my two top picks. But yeah, I use Celestial Gray a lot. I go through inordinate amounts of it. Um, what's another good one? Zandri Dust is another one that I use quite a lot of. Which I guess you could I guess you could sub out for Wraithbone, you know, with the way they're doing the new uh, contrast, that kind of stuff. Like they fill the same role as like this is a pretty good neutral base for building up any kind of color you want. Um, which is you know, generally what I do with those things. So I think that's probably a good choice as well. Xandry Dust. Yeah, Brendan said, said it. Yep. It's an extremely useful paint. Had uh, bad luck with Death World Forest. Interesting. I've never. Can you guys hear that banging? And follow up question if you can, is it annoying? Because I will go ahead and shut down the stream just till they're done. Basically, I think so. My landlord's found uh, like mold in the wall on like, the first floor guy's apartment. And. Uh, freaked out we're like we gotta get inside your house to make sure it's not coming from you guys trickling down and it wasn't because you know it just wasn't us but uh they've been like gutting that first floor apartment for a while now i don't have just one corn red lead belcher dawnstone corn red is a rexure really yeah that's a great one that's a solid point Alright, tell me if the banging bothers you. I'll go ahead and, and 
come back and we'll paint later tonight or something like that. Once uh, work hours are up here. Of course, they didn't start until I already started my stream. Well, I heard them this morning and then it kind of went quiet. I was like, oh, maybe they finished or, you know, got to the point where they needed to stop and like kind of reevaluate what they're going to do, but apparently not. I think the first person to see these suckers live is going to be Ben in the chat. Try and get some war cry in this week. I don't know, man. Like, so the last time I played War Cry, I was actually with Ben. I took it over to Monroe when we were playing the game. I had a great time. And I'm at the point where it's like, I don't know if I want to play 40k as a side game. I actually really, really like War Cry. I might just go and just play a bunch of that. So, Ben, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on old Doug putting aside 40k to just focus on War Cry when I come to Monroe? By old Doug, I mean 30-year-old Doug? How old am I? I think I'm 29 or 30. No bang on my end, but the audio's sort of quiet on my computer with that headphones. Right on. What I really want to do, if I'm honest with you, is I want to do the campaign stuff for Warcry. But that's something where I like I would need to like be commit I, I want to personally be committed to doing several, several games in a row. Like, I'm painting this terrain now, but it's gonna be just a little bit before I play to do the the full campaign thing. I want to do one more one-off video to dial in what people want from the battle reports. Um, because I got some awesome 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 feedback from the last one i want to try a few things and once i get it dialed in then we'll launch the campaign um but in the meantime i want to learn how to use corvus cabal intelligently because <laughs> right now i don't get it um i love the models and i'm going to play them because uh, those are the models i love i think in terms of play style i find myself gravitating much more towards untamed beasts like they've kind of worked together got some heavy hitters so Warcry's pretty good falling. Cool, it's settled. I don't know if I'm gonna worry about my 40k armies as far as my uh, getting everything painted thing. And I'm just gonna focus on uh, the Warcry. Okay, so let's see. So. Yeah, this one was painted with, uh, so was, they're all primed black and dry brushed with Skaven Blight Dinge or something like that, Skaven Dinge, and then Gorther Brown. So that's why it's got kind of a muddy looking color. And that one's, that one's done done. Done done done. Um, let's see. This guy was just Sotek Green, named after our patron saint, Loremaster Sotek. And um, I think he's done as well. I got the rusting effect done. There's no other. Basically, what I'm doing is my last little spot check to make sure there's no hunks of metal or like, you know, um, beams or bolts that I need to paint with some kind of metal color. But that one looks fine. This big guy here. Pretty much has the exact same walls. I'm tempted to get another set of these just to build very different looking buildings. Um, to make some varied backgrounds and landscapes, but you know, I've got so much going on right now. I would rather just focus on getting stuff ready to be able to be played and expanding later. Okay. And then this guy, this guy has some metal stuff. I got to paint. He's got nails in the wood. 
which is weird that this is the only piece that has the scaffolding that's built like that. Some of the smaller bits do as well, but as far as like the bigger structure, this is it. So we'll knock those out right quick. So Mr. Ichiride, if you would like some towel models, you just let me know, my friend. Haven't sold the Death Guard off yet, and I still have 1K of them, so I might just hold on to them and figure something out with the towel. Because I want to do war cry. I want to cry war all day or a day. Uh, let's see. Brendan, playing a game tomorrow? It's 3,000 points. Whoa, that's so huge. Uh, Magkin Iron Jaws versus 2,000 points of Skaven and Fire Slayers and Stormcast is going to be sick. Dang, I love it. Um, Chris, any tips uh, or advice for beginner painters? Like what paints to buy, how to practice before painting models? Best advice I can give you is go to your local GW shop. They'll give you a free model to paint. Ask every question you can possibly think of. Um... I would say maybe think of a few colors that you like beforehand and they'll give you paint for the the standard paint line like you know little pots like this they'll let you use contrast paints um and demo it in real time so you can practice with it there's nothing quite like uh, hands on hands on practice and that kind of stuff so yeah that would be that's my number one suggestion if I'm honest with you. Um, go to go to a store. As far as paints go, people have different opinions. I generally stick to Games Workshop stuff because I really really love their app and their system they created. Where it's just if I want X effect, I just grab these things and it's very consistent. I do I paint quite a lot of different stuff because I tend to rotate armies out here and there uh you know on the occasion on the rig and uh it helps me like keep track of paint schemes that i've done before which is a huge help for example when i got those iron jaws back from jack i was like how in the heck did i paint this blue and i had to do like two test models to try and recreate what i did before Ended up being that I was making it more complicated than it really was, but hey, I find that's generally true. Oh yeah, Ben, I wasn't uh, insinuating that we should have a discussion about buying Tau <laughs> midstream. Hit me up if you want them, if you have any interest. Uh, that's funny. Um, are the card packs actually required to play other factions than the Chaos Cults? You will need them for a reference, however, there is some book coming out, and I think it was in December, I think it's coming up, um, that is going to have, so they, they basically stopped selling those card packs, I don't know why it was limited, but it was, but all the rules that you need to play those factions are going to be in that book, and so, um, yeah, so don't, don't kill yourself with scalpers trying to get the, the cards for it, just hang in a bit and uh, all of a sudden you can get that book and have everything you need but yeah you do need the um the stats and the abilities and that kind of stuff i'm sure someone's scanned them and thrown them up online but uh and if there wasn't a book coming i would have done it for you because it'd be silly to have unsupported stuff just sitting around doing nothing but they already confirmed that. Uh, let's see. Question, Doug, do you think ogres will get any new re-sculpts? Well, they got a tyrant. I'm not sure about anything else. Um, 
Corey, hey Doug, what did you do? What did you do with your ogre half of Beast, uh, Feast of Bones? Um, I actually both halves of that of my set that I got have gone to the rerolling ones gang. So here's <laughs> what happened was. <laughs> Um, I've just been very happy with my uh, Warclans, and I, I was joking with people in the Discord. I was like, "This is what this must be what contentment feels like when someone has an army and they're just happy to have that one army that I've never felt before." Where, um, you know, I I wasn't planning at all to get into the Bone Reapers and the Ogres. Um, it was a total surprise when GW said that they were sending us the Feast of Bones set. Like I was. You know, I haven't gotten actually models from them in a long, long time, so I had no idea. Did not expect it whatsoever. And so I got really amped to play them, and then after a little bit, I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm not excited to play these guys. I think I just got caught up in, like, the fever of how cool the release was. And it is very, very cool, and I love those armies. I just, uh... I don't know. kind of reached a point where I was like, do I really want this, or am I just really excited in the moment and I think I came to the conclusion that it was a momentary thing because the next time I played my War Clans book it's it's the only thing I wanted to paint and so uh, I had already given the Ogre Half to Brent at Rerolling Once so he could have those because he uh, wants to have a fully painted army and there's no better army because there's the fewest possible models um so I gave him those, and then I was going to do the Bone Reapers. And uh, then Jack had a lot of interest, and they wanted to have him on the channel. And so uh, I ended up, he is going to hook me up with some, uh, oh my gosh, what do you call them? Uh, Savage Orc stuff. Bone Splitters things. So I can get a full, sick, nasty, uh, big wah going. And uh, play what I like, which is right now all Ma tribes all the time. I'm not going to make the mistake I made at the beginning of the year by saying, like, I'm going to play this one army only, but I will say that since that book's come out, it's the only thing I've been interested in. Like, they're just so stinking fun. Uh, let's see. Make sure I didn't miss any chats here. I'm just reading through everybody. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, Triosaurus Rex finally made a live stream. Oh, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. What's your preference for brushes? Um, you know, I I bought a set of Games and Gears brushes. I'm going to have a review, hopefully coming up this coming week, uh, of them now that I've used them for a couple months. And I gotta say, I I really like them. It was actually probably the best purchase that I made at Nova. Um, it's these. Ones over here, these little tiny metallic things, and they kind of fold in on themselves like this. They're not magical. They don't make me paint better, but um, they're just very good quality. Um, very reliable and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I just like them. After spending many, many years using uh, cheap craft store brushes and having to replace them quite frequently, I was just like... You know, if I, if I buy a set of brushes and I don't like them or I, I burn through them just as quickly, I will have learned my lesson and I will never buy nice brushes again. And that's fine. Uh, but I have actually really, really enjoyed them. I think this guy's good to go with all the metal bits. I'm just doing a little twirl. Make sure we got all the nails and stuff. Mm, yep, looks good. Quick. I have 120 clan rats. <laughs> it was pure paint. I painted, uh, what did I paint? 
think I got through s maybe 60 of the plague monks or no, it was more, oh, it wasn't 60 plague monks, but I think it was 40 plague monks and 40 clan rats. And that's when I tapped out of that army. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> that was uh, certainly a thing. And then uh, Jack would poke fun at me whenever we were at a store. He'd be like, hey, you want me to buy you some plague monks? And I'd be like, Bleh. <laughs> Hate that army. I want to break every clan rat that I see. I don't actually hate the army. I just got tired of painting the same darn little dude. So I'm trying to be a little more cautious of burnout when it comes to uh, painting up the bone splitters. Because right now I'm set on having, what, so I have 20 arrow boys, 20 savage boys. That'll actually hold me for a little while in terms of what I want to play. So yeah, so at 42 models to paint for the savage orcs, combined with what I already have. Like I already painted 30 more boys and 10 Maniac Boar Boys. Uh, let's see. Love the Teal Sacrosanct Chamber. Oh, thank you. That was easy to achieve. Is 200 old orc Boys list excessive, or do I need to grab two out of rehab? <laughs> I think it was uh, Michael Hammond in the chat who he loves just sp spamming more boys, more boys. Actually, guys, I gotta hop off for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. Can everyone hear me? 
Let me know. Someone just let me know because I turned my mic off. So let me just double check that everything's on and working. Yep, yep. Okay, thank you. Jack, if you are listening, we are a go for tonight. They uh, need to keep my car over the weekend, so I have I have a, uh, a very nice loner car. And uh, I get to keep it for a couple more days, so that's kind of cool. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Yeah, it's... Ugh, man... I don't know why, I don't know if anyone else is like this, but for some reason, like stress when it comes to car stuff, it just feels more intense than anything else. I just hate, 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 hate having to deal with cars. <laughs> Loud and clear, thank you. Uh, so sorry, I, I lost track of what we were talking about. Um, Now I'm lost. Let me pull up. About five. Time to start shutting down work. Nice. Tug's gone. Anarchy. <laughs> 300 zombies led by Necromancer. So, Hannah, about that. I think Legions of Nagash is infinitely more fun when people use zombies rather than skeletons. And I know there's a lot of folks, myself included, who like like the skeleton aesthetic, but the 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 back and forth of like decimating huge swaths of skeletons and then bringing back a bunch of them, I think that's so much more fun for both players. Because like you know the guy playing against that army is having a blast. He's like tearing through zombies because they're they're like made of paper and. Uh, Leaves them to Gash players like, oh yeah, just keep bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back. I love it. I think it's one of the most fun things out there. But if you're going to go like to an event or something like that, skeletons are just, they're just objectively better. But are they as fun? Uh, let's see. So who, who stoked about Slaves to Darkness? Oh man. I'm surprised I'm not more excited, to be honest with you, but I am excited. Okay, that bang is just getting ridiculous. I think they're gutting the, the first floor apartment below me. Figure out where they're... I think, I'm pretty sure our first floor guys were kind of terrible tenants. because they've had a lot of issues that have had the uh, landlords crawling up their tails. Can't wait for the Chaos Warriors. I'm really excited to see what they do with Slaves to Darkness. Now that they, they've confirmed they're, all those monsters and things like that are going to be in that book. I'm so interested to see what they do with it. Like, I want a full, like, Beastmaster, Monster Mash list of just... Or Beastmaster, yeah, yeah. Um, whole bunch of monsters being kind of shepherded into war. Oh, that sounds so cool. Plus, if you do that, it would be not very many models. It would just be a lot of really big, cool things. But right now, my, my standard is, can it have more battle line than Cities of Sigmar? That's battle line options, I mean. Because once they set the bar that high, I'm like, oh, well, man, something's got to surpass that. <laughs> Uh, 
Let's see. You have a skeleton. You have a skeleton. Oh man, I forgot. There's like not just skeletons, but there's like skulls hidden all over this thing. Of course, there's skulls everywhere. It's a GW product. trucks going by apparently and my maintenance crew destroying the apartment below me I think I might hop off until things settle down plus I gotta go tell my wife what I was just told about the car so anyway I will keep working on this I'll throw some pictures up I gotta do a photo session tonight anyway with my uh, nice camera set up for a few other projects but um, yeah, I'll throw pictures of my progress online so everyone can take a look. And I will catch up with everyone later. Uh, hopefully things will be back to normal next week. I just found out that I have to hold on to the car, my rental, for the weekend. And so that will complicate things. So hopefully during the middle of the week I don't have to go get my old car. I can get it in a more reasonable time. Um, so anyway, videos will come as they, as, as soon as I can, and, uh, I will catch you all on the flip side. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I'll catch you later.